हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू आवर थर्ड फ्री सेशन ऑन डेटा एनालिटिक्स विद पाइथन एज अ पार्ट ऑफ डेमो सेशन दिस विल बी आवर थर्ड सेशन टू गेट द आइडिया अबाउट द कोर्स इट्स कंटेंट्स एंड द वे ऑफ कम्युनिकेटिंग द थ्री स्टाइल्स ऑफ मोड व्हिच वी आर प्रोवाइडिंग अ सेल्फ पेस वेयर वीडियोस आर रिकॉर्डेड ऑन साइट वेयर ऑनलाइन वेयर यू कैन गो थ्रू द इंस्ट्रक्टर लीड वेयर माय सेल्फ विल प्रोवाइड यू द लेक्चर्स as the classroom you can come into the classroom and go through the lectures one by one so in this third part we are actually going to code our first basic concept and that is operators and control structure so again this operators and control structure has been divided in two part out of which operators and input output we will have in this session control structures will go in private private part where it will be recorded it will be available but it is on paid basis it will not be free so we will moving up to the operator and input output so let us see how to utilize that so basically the operators which we are going to see here are arithmetic operators relational operator and logical operator so three basic kind of operators we will study with the coding of python all of this code you have to write down on the jupyter step by step in the last section or the last video if you have done you must have installed the anaconda and the jupiter on your machine so you have to open a new jupiter file and you have to work on that along with that we will see how we can have the user input and output in python it is a very easy task and how to utilize that that also we will see so that will be a part of this session the video which we are looking at in the second part we will have all details on control structures so let's dive deep into it in this coding whichever the code i show i will explain it so since it is a recorded video you just understand whatever the things i am explaining once you have done you can pause the video write the code in your jupyter run it get the answers then you run the video again what happens sometimes we have the habit that whenever we see the code immediately we start writing and then most of the important points which i am right to tell you will be missed so obviously it is a video you can repeat it many number of times but at the start only if you have that habit of listening first then pausing the video for a moment and then writing the code it will be easy for you to understand and then run the code and for running the code obviously you have to use the jupiter which will be an easy for you you can use any other ides pycharm is there spider is there or uh, any other uh, id if you are comfortable with but as a training uh, program i will suggest you go with the jupiter so let us see what are the things we are going to see in this video so first jumping on to the operator what is that operator and operands are so a simple example of an expression is 2 plus 3 so when i say it is 2 plus 3 it is simple expression and most statements like the logical lines that we write will contain the expression always so by expression wise you will write the code in any programming language it is not only the python and the operators which we are going to study here are the basic block of any programming language so it is not only python have that any language if you know already or if you are working you will find out these things are there okay so that will be the case an expression can be broken down in operators and operands so basically two things are there there are some operators there are some operands each operator will need some operands to work on and that is the strategy behind that so the operators are functionality that do something and can be represented by symbols such as plus minus multiply and by or by the special keywords also so you can use special keywords for some kind of operator like we have double star and question mark and and operator we will see that operators require some data to operate on and such data is called operands so basically if i look at this 2 plus 3 2 and 3 are operands where plus is the operator so that is the basic definition again if you go in detail of that there is associative left associative right associative preference many things are there but we do not required since our focus is data analytics so from programming point of view what things we should need that only we are going to learn so let us see the code so let's jump on to the next slide and as i said since i will explain the code you can pause the video for a moment and then you can write the code in your jupyter file so the plus symbol adds the two objects so why i am saying two objects when i go with 3 plus 5 it actually adds 3 and 5 and gives the answer 8 
and that is a direct answer because both the integers I am adding. But instead of that, if I write single quote A, single quote B, it actually adds two A and B strings data type because we have seen in last video when we install the IDL and Jupyter, each time when I use single quote or double quote, it is a str string data type. So when I use A plus B, it actually concatenate both of the things. What that means, the plus sign which we are looking at is overloaded. What do you mean by overloaded? Plus sign looks at its left and right and accordingly decide what things has to be done. And this plus sign we will use in uh, new new data types also once we go into that videos where if it is a list, if it is a something dictionary, a tuple, still a concatenation addition is possible. Okay, so that is overloaded plus operator. But if I go with single quote a plus 5, it is string you are trying to add with integer, not possible and it will generate an error. So that is the plus operator. The minus on the same line gives the subtraction of one number from other. And obviously the negative cannot work with the string and other stuff. So it is not mostly overloaded, but still it, at some point it may be overloaded. If the first operand is absent, it is assumed to be 0. So minus 5.2 or 0 minus 5.2 both will give the same answer minus 5.2 whereas 50 minus 24 obviously will give the 26 a simple minus answer. So that is first of the two arithmetic operators plus and minus. So as I said you can pause the video at this time you can write this code and then jump on to the next one. So that is the procedure you follow from next time I will just continue the code one by one. So going on to the next multiply and power function. So the multiply again it is an overloaded uh, operator as you can see 2 into 3 gives the multiplication and the multiplication happens but if I pass something LA in single quote it is what a string str multiplied by 3 means LA should be repeated 3 times and a new string LA 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 3 times appear so that is also possible with the multiply. The power function is available which is double star again it is defined or predefined in python. For each other programming language, it may be some other way to define something to the power on something. Maybe a tilde operator, maybe a uh, upper cap or caret symbol, anything can be there. So the power function, it is just x to the power y. So it is 3 to the power 4, that is multiply 3 4 times. That is the obvious way of multiplication of 3 to the power 4. So 3, 3, 3, 3 and the answer 81 comes. So that is an also easy operator's function. The next one which comes which can be useful is once is divide. So when I go with 13 by 3, it gives me the answer 4.333 and that is the float answer. When uh, Python 2.7 was there, it was supposed to give integer only and you have to convert it into float and something like that. From Python 3 and onwards, it has been removed. So answer comes out to be in a float and that is the correct answer. But if I want only the quotient or the integer part of that, I will need to convert it with int symbol. What exactly I am doing here, int is what? A data type. So when I say int in bracket, whatever the output comes, I want to convert into integer data type. That is the meaning behind that. And this is actually a constructor function of the class int, if you know some object oriented concept. So that is the way it is converted and only 4 is written. Similarly, a modulo operator is there and the modulo is talking about the remainder. So it returns the remainder of the division given by percentage. So 13 percent 3 gives the answer 1. Obviously, that is the remainder. 23 by 2 gives the 1. 20 by 2, that by means percent side gives the 0. And most of the time, this modulo operator will be used for identifying even odd numbers because Every time when I divide odd number with 2, I get 1 as a remainder. Every time I divide even number with 2, I get a 0. So that is the way it can be used and there are other utility. So these are the simplest arithmetic operators which we can utilize for our purpose and which will be used for our data analysis purpose. There are many other methods also or the operators, but it is not required for current purpose. So now we will jump on to the second type. And for each mentioned headings or the type which I am showing operator, you should write the code in proper format in Jupyter, which I have explained in the previous video. So do check the previous video also. Next comes the relational operator. And as the name suggests, it is greater than, less than, greater than or equal to and so on. So if I write something less than, it is 5 less than 3. 
or 3 less than 5 returns false or true according to the condition. Obviously, 5 is not less than 3, hence false. 3 is less than 5, hence true. The false and true values you are looking at are the Boolean values present in Python which are with the first letter capital. So, false with F capital, true with T capital are the predefined Python keywords. So, if I write false here, which we will write after 2-3 slides, you will see the color got changed. So, whenever the color changes, it means that the compiler or for our case Jupyter identify it as a Python keyword. So, that also one point you should remember always. Then next thing comes is the chain rule that the comparisons can be chain arbitrarily. So, I have 3 less than 5 less than 7. So, what happens here? 3 is less than 5, true. 5 is less than 7, true. True and true becomes true. And that is the way true answer comes. In between some false comes, the output will be false. Similarly, the greater than sign is there. So, 5 greater than 3, yes, it is true. The answer is true. So, that is the simplest relational operator I can utilize. Coming for the more interesting thing in that, let's go to the next one. Less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. Again, it is something less than or equal to or greater than using the symbols less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. The new thing which I added in this code is the semicolon. Up till now, whatever the code you have seen, semicolon was not present. And that means when you write the code, semicolon is not required, not compulsory. But if I want to write multiple statements in a single line, semicolon is required. Like x is equal to 3, y is equal to 6 and then checking if x is less than or equal to y, which is true because 3 is less than or equal to 6. So, 3 lines I am writing in a single line, that's why I am putting semicolon so that compiler should understand, okay, that is the case, the statement ends, I should have a new statement. Statement ends, I should have a new statement. After that, I don't require a semicolon. So, this thing I can write one by one below also, x is equal to 3, below that y is equal to 6, below that x is less than or equal to y. That will also work. That time, semicolon is not required because new line is always a new statement. So, that is the way sometimes if you want to write a small snippet of code, you can use the semicolon. Otherwise, it is not compulsory in Python. On the same line, we can have greater than or equal to where x and y I have putting some values and checking if x is greater than y. And it is true, 4 is greater than or equal to 3. So, that is the way new concept of semicolon also added. So, generally all the codes we will see after this has been added with new new concepts. So, you get the idea of original thing along with something new. Okay. So, that you will see here also. Double equal to simple that is for the comparison. So, when I do x is equal to 2 single equal to it is an assignment operator. That means I am assigning value 2 to x assigning value 2 to y. And then when I put double equal to it is the checking of if x is equal to y which is true. On the same line, I have added two more lines that is x is equal to str, y is equal to str with r capital. Here both are same. So, the answer for both the equal to symbol is false and true. That means to be understood, to be underlined, Python is case sensitive. So, any string like for me, Anu with a capital and Anu with a small are two different strings, not the same string. Whenever I write two variables, say, uh, uh, one variable with num app app and another variable with capital app both the variables are different so you as a programmer should be cautious when you write the program because python is totally case sensitive whatever uppercase whatever lowercase are totally different things so that is another new thing i have added along with the double equal to symbol and if i have to check not equal to not equal to symbol like this exclamatory sign and equal to is available and for this 2 is not equal to 3, so the answer comes out to be true. So that is the new thing you should understand from relational point of view. So first we have seen the arithmetic, the second the relational operator, third comes into the picture is logical operator. And basically three logical operators are there, they are not and or. So that is the three and how we can utilize. So, I have x is equal to true and as I said in just 2-3 uh, minutes back that true with t capital or false with f capital are the predefined keywords of python and that's why its color got changed that also suggests you should not use true or false as some variable name or some other purpose okay it will override the actual meaning so that should be avoided then when i use x is equal to true semicolon not of x is reverse of that 
Similarly, you have or and and. So x true, y false. Obviously, x or y. Any one is true. Answer is true. X and y false true. X and y. Any one is false. Answer is false. So that is the easiest way I can do the logical operation between two uh, variables, two expressions, who return something true or false. Basically, our operations or logical operations performs on logical values only, not on the other cases. The one new thing, which is also a kind of interview type of question. is short circuit evaluation what that means in python short circuit evaluation is there like let's concentrate on and suppose we have x and y and z three statements are there and first x is here false so once i see first x is false there is no need to check what is y and what is z because obviously it is a and statement and if any one is false others whatever it they may they be true or false answer is going to be false So Python compiler will not go for y and z and directly come out saying it is a false. Like a if statement, if you are writing, that may happen. So that is called short circuit AND gate. Similarly, short circuit OR is x true y false. If I have x or y or z, so it is reverse now. If x is true, there is no need to check if y and z are true or false because any one is true or is going to return the true. So that reduces the compilation time. but sometimes that may produce some problems like if y and z are the function call so what should i do so instead of that then z you should put as a first statement which will be a function call doing some database related thing suppose and you come back with some true and false and then you check other values so that is mean short circuit evaluation you should make note of that because that is also a typical interview type question and why this name came short circuit evaluation name came because generally the logical gates are shown with some kind of switch if you remember there are the switches which you can open and close and the bulb glows or not glows and that's why the short circuit evaluation name came into it so that also you should confirm so these are the three operators we are supposed to consider the logical the arithmetic and the relational coming into the last part which is how i can take the input and output from the user understand closely then right i will also show some pitfall in that you should avoid that so in python all the inputs are has to be passed from obviously from your keyboard so it is always taken as a string nothing else will be taken and that is a very good thing if you compare this with your some c c++ other stuff you have lot many things like percent d percent s nothing is there all are string if you want it in integer you convert it afterward and that is a very good thing provided by python so as a first code here person name is just a variable name and i am using a function input along with a prompt enter your name so when i run this line i am going to run both of this line in a same cell i will show that on jupiter also so you will get the idea so once i run this line it prompt me enter your name with a blank or a box where if i put anup and press enter it goes in this variable so now this variable is of data type string str it is an object of string and then i can print simply saying hello comma person name so after comma comma if i add anything all of them will be converted into string and a concatenation happens and hence hello space anup is given so that is a simple print statement also you don't have to go with percent d and percent f for all that stuff it is all string always if you have the integer you convert it okay or the print will convert with the comma so that is the way easiest way the python works with input and output another example suppose if i want to take the age so if i say enter your age age will be entered suppose 23 the 23 will be taken but this variable will be of string data type so in future if i want to write some code like if age is less than 20 you say something if age is more than 20 you say something then that time age comparison will be required if i use this string 23 in single quote that comparison will not work so that means i need to convert that 23 into integer and that i am doing with int so once i use the int it is converted into integer and again as i said after comma any data type you pass print will convert it into string and will concatenate and hence age 23 comes but if you look at this code we may say every time do we need to have two variables for taking uh, integer or float values i will say no you can combine this thing and i have shown here the same thing it is age underscore one again just a variable all these person name age str age age underscore one are just the variable names you can use anything ijk then no problem 
So here I am putting both the function which we have sorted out or separated in a same line saying integer input enter your age. So now what happens when I run this line it asks for the age which I passed 23 which will be taken here and converted into integer. So if I print type of age it is printed class integer that is the data type of age 1 is of integer data type and then I can print as usual as like this. So most of the time you will follow this trend integer input rather than input and integer separately when you want to take the values and want to convert it into integer. When you want to take strings only then it is direct as here enter your name. So that is the way input and output functionality works. While doing this input output functionality on Jupyter there may be a problem of kernel busy here. So that has to be avoided. I will just show you that example through the Jupyter code. So let me go back and uh, let me open my Jupyter file. So I will just open a new Jupyter file. So for you also, you also work on the new Jupyter file in Jupyter and after this session and all the session you follow some coding example or some name convention like here I should use some name one underscore I have told that in uh, I have already told in the previous uh, video also. So it should be something operators. And I can say control structure, a short form. So that if I give such kind of name, it will remain one underscore one underscore one. And if you continue with us for the all the course, you have to create the files as one underscore one. Then for the new topic like data types, it should be one underscore two underscore data types. Then functions one underscore two and uh, one underscore three underscore functions and so on. So all will be alphabetically ordered in your machine. So anytime you can check anyone. And you can understand which was taken first, which one next and so on. As we move on to the phase 2, it will be 2 underscore 1, 2 underscore 2 and so on. So that thing you follow. So as a previous case, if I suppose say a simple p is a variable where I am asking for input. Okay. So input is the function and I am asking simple thing. Enter a name with the space. Okay. And I just want to print that p. Okay. So the problem which you may face that only I want to suggest here. So once this is written, I will run it and do observe once I press run, I get enter the enter a name here and a box where I should write something. At the same time, the star mark appear. That means the server or this session is running. It is not stopped to take new command. So you will see on this right top corner of the Jupyter kernel busy. That means the session or the code is expecting something then only it will become ideal. So here if I write Anup and press enter, I am pressing the enter. So Anup is printed and you will see now the kernel is ideal. It is out of that session which was continuously running and I got one. And that you should follow. Sometimes what happens if I run this code again, again it is asking and at the same time we start changing something here like e i do and then if i do something n uh, to capitalize it and we are not entering at the same time we may write something else also like print i want to write something else and at that time i am ignoring that kernel is busy so if i am trying to write this one a simple code which you can see and if i try to run this code it will again go in star so it will continue nothing will be output and you will be surprised why no output is coming even if i have written the correct code so the thing what happened you have missed this part and that's why the problem has happened. So there are two solutions to avoid that. One you put here what is required and press enter and at the same time both the codes will run kernel will be free. That is one of the way. In some way that may not be a possible because some other changes like if I run it again and then I'm again I am running the second code. So now I am again in the same situation. The second option which is provided in Jupyter is to restart the kernel and for that you have to click here. This thing we have to take in second session also which will be the paid one but still I am focusing this so you should not face the problem in start. So you can restart the kernel so look here still kernel is busy I am pressing on restart so it asks me should we continue or restart so once I click on restart my kernel will be restarted so you have to just wait for some time. It will be restarted and this circle which was supposed to be there will be free and now it is free. Now this will not work, nothing will work. This has to run, this has to run, will run separately. So if I now run this, I will get the output, no problem. 
if I run this, it will also run and if I pass unopen, press enter, it will also run. So there are two ways, if the code is not modified and the box is still there from the input, you write the input, press enter, everything will run fine. If you miss that train and you have the problem, you have to go to the symbol which I have mentioned, it is kernel restart and press that and restart kernel and wait for some time to make this kernel ideal. Then you can work with the your code. So that was the thing we are supposed to discuss in this session where we have talked about all the things uh, regarding uh, the operators which was basically the arithmetic operator, the relational operator and the logical operators. Then we have seen how I can take the input and output from the user and some in between trap because of the kernel busy error how to avoid that. So that completes this video. In the next video if you subscribe to our uh, uh, course and if you complete all the formality the other videos which will be a private videos will be available to you. Else you can uh, go to registration for online or the classroom sessions also. In that the second part generally I thought are on control statement. How we can write the if, if else and if else if statement. How we can have the for and while loop and how we can control the loop statement using break continue pass with small example with some uh, juggling of the value. So you should get a good idea of the logical uh, thing behind the writing a program. So that was supposed to be this part of this video. The, all the three videos do see in synchro like first one where we provide the detail about data analytics with Python, the introduction, then the Python environment setup and the third one is operator and control setup. Hope you like all the videos and you will enroll with us to have a bright future. Again best of luck for your future and be ready for the data analytics in Python course. Thank you.